So it seems like everybody's talking about the neural filters inside of Photoshop 2021 that have just been released. Let's take a deep dive into those right now. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and we're going to take a look at Adobe AI or Adobe Sensei, which is actually the name of their AI. And we're going to look at these neural filters. Now they've been around for a little while. You guys might have seen neural filters in, from Google and different places like that with age progression. These do that, but they kind of do a little bit more than that as well. So let's jump in and have a look right now. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button and you're going to get a new video from me every single week. Why don't we start with what everybody's looking at and that's just doing a basic age progression. Let's do that right now on myself. So we're going to choose filter and then we're going to go down to the neural filters. We'll do this pretty quickly so we can spend a little bit of time looking at some of the other options. So you'll see on here we've got Featured and Beta. If you click on Beta, Smart Portrait is the one where we're doing this aging. So we're going to turn on Smart Portrait. And then what it's going to do is it's actually going to send it up to the cloud, analyze the image, and send it back. So we're, we're just going to go straight down to Facial Age. We're going to turn this on, and let me just pull this down a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. And why don't we just go ahead and painfully let's make myself old <laughs> okay so this is what I'm gonna look like when I'm a hundred <laughs> I can see you know it's kind of worked quite well with some of the areas here adding the wrinkles in the foreheads different things like that this line down one side of the mouth is a little odd um, but okay we get the general idea um, and why don't we go the other way and let's make me super young and there we go. Notice once you've applied it once, you can change these settings very, very quickly because now it's already analyzed the image. So if you wanted to go, you know, to your regular photo and maybe just age it a couple of years or take off a couple of years, that might be something that's a little bit more practical that you might want to do. Now, when you are, obviously I've got a hat on here, so you're not going to see it too much, but hair thickness is something that you would use if you wanted to change that progression. So if you wanted to make someone look older, push it up a little bit, give it a second, and then you might bring the hair back a little bit and thin it. Of course I have a hat on, so it's not going to show it very well. Now let me show you something that's interesting. We can change the head direction. Let me just reset that to, or just turn that off actually, just to go to the regular picture. And let's move the head a little bit to the left. And notice how the head can change. We can move it to the right. And you might find that the hat doesn't quite line up. In fact, let's go very hard here because notice the face is changing, but the hat isn't and it creates this little bit of a gap. So we have this option here, placement. And this is what placement will enable us to do. Let's move this over. We want to go the other way. And notice how you can do that. You can use it to line up with different objects. Here's another fun thing is gaze. Watch this. If I let's reset the head direction and let's look at gaze. Watch the eyes. Let's move the eyes over. So now I'm looking at this phone. So this is actually something that I think could be useful is using this gaze when we're doing compositing and things like that. And you want to kind of, you know, do different things. Let's move the eyes the other way. So that seems to work quite well. So some of this I think is just going to be pure fun and some of it is going to be useful when it comes to, you know, actual, you know, adding a little bit of mood, but I think the key is going to be working subtly. Uh, let's look at the light direction. This is kind of interesting and this is definitely something that could come in useful for compositing. So let's move to the left and watch what happens on the face with the light. See how we've got that light, almost like a portrait light you would see on a mobile phone. And if you wanted to have the light coming a little bit from the other direction, let's move that over and notice how it illuminates the other side. Now, this is something I definitely could see myself using. You just got to be a little bit careful with it. Uh, but, you know, sometimes when you put a face in and the light's not quite matching the rest of the image, this is where this could come in use is using that. And of course, you guys have already seen the happiness, I'm sure. Let's, let's make me really happy. 
because the lips are sealed. So, well, look at that. Now I have teeth. I guess I just get random teeth. And here's another thing that's interesting too is this turn off the unique uh, details. And uh, let's turn that on and off so you guys can see that. So if I turn that off, it makes you look a little bit more generic. And if you turn this on, it actually makes you look a little bit more like that person. Okay, let's bring that back just a little bit. So here we go. So if we go from there to maybe the other way, not quite so happy. See, when we're going a little more subtle, it definitely is believable. So there's a point there where you just push it so hard, it just goes kind of crazy. And of course, we can do surprise. Let's add a little bit of surprise in there, but a happy surprise. Let's make that more happy. Now, if you have a photo that already shows the teeth, it's obviously going to choose the teeth. Otherwise, it's just going to make up teeth. Uh, so we can, you know, we could do a happy surprise there. And we're definitely not going to be angry. We're going to be super chill. So see what I'm doing is I'm combining these. So why don't we, we've got a couple of pictures of women here. So we've got this one here. She's got some eye, heavy eye makeup around the edges. And this woman here doesn't have so much eye makeup. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the makeup from one image and apply it to the other. So let's see how that works. Let's go to our neural filters. And let's go down to our makeup transfer and we're going to turn that on. So right now the image that we're applying it to is here and we can see there's our bounding box there. It's found the face. That's what that box means that this is the face. And then we're going to use another image. Now we can navigate to an image but one of the nice things that images that are open or have recently been opened are going to be available in here so why don't we grab this one here and that's the other image that we looked at before with the darker eyes and let's turn that on and we can see on the left side it's working really well right side's working pretty good but there's a little bit of a line in there you know where it's not quite working perfectly so you know these are beta so there's still some work to do in these all right, so we can see, you know, it's okay, but I could go and I could fix that definitely pretty easily using a clone stamp or something like that. So if we want to look at this before and after, there's our before and there's our after. It's done the lips, it's done the eyes, eyebrows. And then there's other ones under here that are not enabled. We can see these photo restoration, dust and scratches you know, photo to sketch, sketch to portrait. To be honest, I'm not so much excited about some of these, you know, the face to caricature could be fun. For me, I like some of these things like photo restoration or noise reduction. Some of the practical things are where I find AI is super useful. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, click on I'm interested and then submit that to Adobe because you're basically voting. And if we get enough people to vote for some of these features, there's more of a chance that Adobe's going to develop those or give them priority over the other ones. Okay, so here we are inside of our beta labs. Let's go to the ones that are actually using right now. Let's go back to, let's cancel this out. We'll go back to myself. So here I am. And let's look at the... The ones that are actually shipping. So we've got skin smoothing and style transfer. So let's turn on the skin smoothing. And you can see it looks very much like what you would get with frequency separation. Okay, so you can definitely play around with these. So right now I'm just doing some skin smoothing and notice, you know, how much better it looks. If it feels like it's a little too much, here's a trick. For output, we've got different options here. We're going to keep it on new layer and then click OK to apply it. And now it's going to drop it onto a new layer and see there's the face, there's where it smoothened it. So if you want to blend it in with the original, just take the opacity down and just kind of blend it in. And so right now I'm just applying it at 56% and I think I'm getting a better result. You could also create a layer mask and just paint it into the areas that you want. So if we look at this before and after, I think that's a much more flattering image and it still looks like me. 
Okay, let's have a look at this image and see if we can create a little bit of atmosphere or a little bit of haze in the background without making any selections. So let's go to the filter. We're going to choose our neural filters. And this time we're going to use depth aware haze. Let's turn that on and see how that looks. See what that's doing is creating a little bit of haze in the background. Now we can change the warmth of this. Let's turn that on. And if we want to make it cooler, pull it to the left. And if you want to make it warmer, pull it to the right. And we can adjust the amount of haze if we want a little bit less haze. So if we're just looking at this before and after, you can see, well, let's go under here. We're going to choose filter and we're going to choose the neural filters. And there's a whole series of artistic ones called style transfer. And if we turn these on, if you want to see more, click on show more. And these show different styles of artwork that can be applied in a single click. So if we click there, it's going to apply that style of artwork to that photograph. Okay, and I'll leave it to you to decide if you like those or not. Personally, I'm more of a fan of the practical use of the AI than I am in the creating the art, because to me, the art looks a little, uh, just to me, it looks a little artificial. Okay, so there was a look at some of the things we can do using the neural filters inside of Photoshop. I'm going to continue this series of new features in Photoshop 2021. Uh, last one I did was um, more in depth on the sky replacement. And then I also did another video where I looked at the top features inside of Photoshop 2021, as well as the top features inside of Lightroom Classic 10. So check those out and let me know what features you'd like to see me dig deep into in the next episode. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew and get a new tutorial every week. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.